In the battle over vaccine mandates, some California parents opposed to a future vaccine requirement for students are now taking their children out of school in protest. And it comes as some police officers in Chicago are also defying the mayor's order to confirm their vaccination status. Here's ABC's chief national correspondent, Matt Gutman, in California. Across California today, in those boisterous protests, thousands opposing the state's vaccine mandate for students. Some parents preparing to homeschool their kids. I will never vaccinate my kids. Okay. I will never vaccinate. So you would pull them out? I will pull them out. I will quit my job. I will teach them at home if I have to. California teachers are now required to get the shot, and all students will follow as soon as the vaccine is fully approved for their age group. The COVID vaccine joining a list of 10 other vaccines required for California schools, like the measles and mumps. But Lindsay McCoy, who started homeschooling her kids last year, says this vaccine is different. Do you do the MMR vaccines and the polio and all that stuff as well? I am totally pro-vaccine. In general? In general, absolutely. And I think that it's my choice with my doctor. We should have a conversation and decide what, what is necessary for our children. And tonight, across the country, some police officers are also pushing back against vaccine mandates. In Chicago, 35% of the police department's officers haven't reported their vaccination status and risk losing their jobs. I really hope that the men and women of the Chicago Police Department, who have been fed a lot of stuff, that's the most polite, appropriate word I can use um, in this forum, are not going to ruin their careers over going to a website and saying yes or no. Last year, nationwide, 62% of all officer deaths in the line of duty were from COVID. Our thanks to Matt Gutman. And now let's bring in Dr. Darian Sutton, an emergency medicine physician and ABC News medical contributor. Great to have you here in person in studio with us. Uh, certainly there is breaking news at this point. The FDA has just made a ruling or a decision about their recommendation as far as mixing and matching the different vaccines. What do they say? So this is incoming data that we're getting minute by minute. And so essentially what we know is that the FDA has approved the Pfizer booster shot, as we know. What it looks like is going to happen very soon in the next couple of days, probably this week, is that they will probably approve Moderna and Johnson & Johnson boosters for those who are eligible. And the most important part, which is the most popular question, they're likely going to allow those who have received a vaccination to, to get another vaccination that is different from their primary vaccination. So that answers that question of, are we going to be allowed to mix and match? But the language is probably going to be very specific, as it probably is altered and specific to the patient, depending on their history, as well as their age and other factors. And let's go back to, to Colin Powell here. We learned today, obviously, that he was double vaccinated, that he was supposed to get that booster shot the week that he got sick. How much of a concern for you is it that that breakthrough infection contributed in part to his death? You know, uh, it is incredibly tragic each and every death that we see succumbing to COVID-19 or, or because of COVID-19. And I have to say that they always concern me, but for specific reasons. Uh, in particular, General Powell and his story, it highlights something very important, which is that we need to continue to protect those who are vulnerable. And by that, I mean those who are elderly and those who are battling a chronic disease that may make them susceptible to infection despite their history of getting vaccinated. And how important now does this put in perspective with him and many others as far as the importance of that booster shot for the most vulnerable among us. It's really important, and I want to be clear, is that the vaccines are still proving to be effective for the majority of the population. Uh, most recent statistics point out that of the more than 187 million people who have been vaccinated, there have only been approximately 7,000 breakthrough cases that have resulted in a death secondary to COVID-19. So this is a very rare occurrence. But of those 7,000 cases, the majority of those are over the age of 65 and or suffering from a disease that may make them immune compromised, such as multiple myeloma myeloma, which we now understand is a part of General, uh, excuse me, of General Powell's story. And in everything that we measure as far as COVID-19 is concerned, when we talk about cases, when we talk about hospitalizations and deaths, it seems that we're going in the right direction, all of them on the decline at this point. Uh, but at this point, where would you say we are as far as the trajectory of the virus is concerned as it relates to vaccination rates? I think that we're walking very cautiously but slowly down the hill of COVID-19. I feel very confident in that, not just in the overall numbers, but as a full-time practicing physician in Los Angeles, I have seen very much how the day-to-day -day activity has changed from patients who are coming in symptomatic with COVID-19 to now it's more of a rare occurrence. But we have to be cautious because we're stepping into the winter colder climates where people are going to step indoors and engage in high-risk activity. And we're already seeing in the northern states, uh, there are increasing numbers of cases. So we have to 
to be really cognizant of that. If we were to see another variant like Delta hit us, and we saw in Matt, Matt's piece there a little bit ago that there were people who are still protesting vaccines, would you say that enough of the population is vaccinated at this point that we would weather another bout a little better, perhaps? That's a really difficult variable to try to get your hands on when you're trying to extrapolate it to predict the future. What we know is that uncontrolled transmission leads to the development of new variants. We saw it in India when we first had the emergence of the Delta variant. We saw it in the UK when we first had the emergence of the Alpha variant. And what we're seeing in these small pockets is not just vaccine hesitation, but also hesitation about mitigation efforts. And lack of vaccines and lack of mitigation leads to uncontrolled transmission. So I'm really, really... Uh, Important. I think it's really important to focus on these communities because they can be a source of future variants that might threaten all of our hard work. Dr. Darian Sutton, we so appreciate you, Thank your you. insight and you being here with us. Appreciate your time. Thank you. Hi, everyone. George Stephanopoulos here. Thanks for checking out the ABC News YouTube channel. If you'd like to get more videos, show highlights, and watch live event coverage, click on the right over here to subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to download the ABC News app for breaking news alerts. Thanks for watching.